you'll notice that we're using some data sets we've used in the past. So I'm gonna kind of skip through the research questions and all of the variables. This is something you should be somewhat familiar with at this point. You should have also noticed that you weren't given every single command this time. At this point, you should be able to remember how to do a t-test, how to assess for um, equal variability and so forth. So I am gonna go through some commands that weren't given to you on the worksheet, but again, those are things that you should be really comfortable doing at this point. So for the first example, we are going back to the very beginning and we're gonna take a look at that ADD data set. And really we just have two variables of interest from this data set. So IQ score, as well as dropout. So we have the IQ score for all students, which is a numeric variable. And then we also have whether or not the students dropped out of high school, which is a categorical variable. In this example, dropout would be the independent variable and IQ is dependent variable. With this type of design, because dropout is only two levels, they either dropped out or did not drop out, a t-test would be best suited. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, just look at the independent samples t-test and then test the assumption of equal variability. From there, it might actually be best to, to run a non-parametric test. All right, so let's go ahead and do this in Stata. We're gonna import that ADD data set. Okay, and again, the only variables we need today are IQ and dropout. So the first thing we'll do is run that t-test. Command is super simple, it's just t-test. The dependent variable IQ by the independent variable dropout. I'm not gonna go through the output for the t-test and ANOVA today. Again, we've gone through that in practicals in the past, so I will go through it quickly. The most important thing is that we can compare the results of the t-test compared to the Man Whitney U. All right, so let's take a look. The first thing that's really jumping out at us, or at least something that's jumping out at me, is that the number of observations for those who did not drop out compared to those who did drop out is quite different. So 78 students did not drop out of high school and 10 did. This makes a lot of sense though, right? There are far fewer people who do drop out of high school compared to those who complete. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that we have such an unbalanced design. That's just a function of just typical human behavior. But that is definitely something we want to consider when we, when we interpret the results. Right? We also have the mean IQ for each group, which does appear to be uh, slightly different. It's about a 12 IQ score difference. And the standard deviation also does not appear to be the same. Right? So the standard deviation for IQ for those who did not drop out is 12.95. And for those who did drop out, the standard deviation is 6.74. So considering the unequal observations and the very different standard deviation, we might wanna take the results of this t-test with a grain of salt. We have a t-statistic of 2.93, and we're just gonna interpret the, the middle p-value here, right? So we didn't have any direction to our hypotheses or our research question, so we're gonna do the non-directional p-value, which does suggest there is a significant difference in IQ between the group that did not drop out compared to the group that did. But we wanna cover all of our bases, right? So we know that we have an unequal design and it might be the case that the standard deviations aren't equal. So maybe it's best to do a non-parametric test. Uh, let's first confirm uh, my assumption about the standard deviation, about us violations of assumption of homoscedasticity. You weren't given this command in the worksheet but this is something you should be comfortable doing by now. So to do, to test Levine's test of equal variability, the command is robe var, the DVIQ by dropout. Remember that the null hypothesis for Levine's test states that we do have equal variability in the DV across the two levels. So essentially the null hypothesis is that this standard deviation is equal to this standard deviation. And for that reason, we actually want to fail to reject that null hypothesis, meaning the p should be greater than 0.05. And when we take a look at our p-value in this top line, the p is exactly equal to 0.05, which means we're pretty much on the border and we can, we can conclude that this is significant and we'll reject the null hypothesis 
and state that we do not have equal variability in IQ scores between those who did not drop out and those who did. Right, so this is pretty problematic data we're working with here. Comparing the means alone might not be the most reliable test. So let's go ahead and do the Man Whitney U test, and then we can compare the results. The command for Man Whitney U is rank sum, and again, the DVIQ by the independent variable dropout. All right, so in this table, we do get the number of observations again. So 78 students did not drop out and 10 did. Then we get the rank sum. So remember from before we talked about how the rank sum is calculated. That's just ordering all of the data for everyone who did not drop out and for those who did, ordering it from smallest to largest and then assigning ranks. To calculate the rank sum, again, we just add the, the actual ranks for each observation. And we also can see the expected rank. If everything were equal, if there was no clustering on either side of the, the ordering, this would be the expected rank for those who did not drop out and for those who did. Now remember that we can't actually compare the rank sums to each other without also considering the expected ranks. And this is particularly important for an unbalanced design where we have one level of our independent variable that has 78 observations, while the other has only 10 observations. It would already be the case that the rank sum for this group is going to be much smaller compared to the 78 observation group. So we have to consider these rank sums in the context of the expected rank sum. And what we can tell from this table, the group who did not drop out the rank sum is larger at 3,699 compared to the expected rank. And the opposite tr is true for the group that did drop out. So the actual rank sum is 217, while the expected was 445. Stata also prints the total variance for the sample or for the rank distribution. And it gives us the unadjusted variance as well as the adjusted variance for ties. Basically what this is doing is it's considering ranks that are the same. Remember from our example before, there were two people who laughed four times and they had the same rank. That's pretty much what's meant by adjusting for ties. It's those same ranking. But more importantly, we get a Z score and a P value associated with the Z. The Z score for this Man Whitney U test is 2.99 and the p-value is 0 0.0027. Again, we're going to compare the p-value against 0 0.05, just like we do with the t-test, and we'll conclude that there is a significant difference between these two groups, which means we can reject this null hypothesis that the IQ for those who drop out is the same compared to those who did not drop out. Even if you weren't provided with the p-value here, we can still conclude that this is a significant difference because the z-score is greater than 1.96. So even without a p-value, if z is greater than 1.96, the groups are different. Now, there are a couple decisions we have to make when it comes to the actual conclusion. For any non-parametric test, we're not comparing means together. So we, if we were to report the man Whitney U, we can't actually conclude that the mean IQ for those who did not drop out is significantly greater than the mean IQ for those who did drop out because that's not what this test is actually telling us. So what you would wanna do is either report the median or you can simply state that those who dropped out of high school have a lower IQ compared to those who did not drop out of high school. Again, you cannot report the means in the context of a non-parametric test. But we do have one more thing we should consider here with these data. And that's the comparison between the results of the Man Whitney compared to the, the independent samples T. At the end of the day, we do make the same conclusion, right? That there is a significant difference between these two groups. Because these results agree with each other, because the p-value is significant for both of these tests, you could report the results of the independent samples T you would want to mention the unequal sample sizes and you would want to bring up the violation of homogeneity of variance. 
But in this case, you could, you could still report the results of the t-test as well as the mean differences. So this is really the, the biggest drawback of a non-parametric test. When it comes time to conclude, we can't make a conclusion in terms of the, the mean difference. We can only say that there is a significant difference. So when the results of the parametric compared to the non-parametric really tell you the same thing, it's, it is perfectly fine to report the results of the t-test and again, report the mean difference.